Thailand. Hi, I'm Lisa, and this is Threshold in China, a segment that gives you a taste of the future before it actually happens. I'm going to talk about emerging technologies that have life-changing potential and assess their ability to influence our life in the near future. Our show today will be slightly different to the usual routine. Normally, we focus on cutting-edge research that already exists in the lab, but today we apply our Threshold skill to rate these various technologies featured in sci-fi movie. The Wandering Earth 2, the prequel to the 2019 blockbuster The Wandering Earth, has been a big hit in China and other released areas since February. The sci-fi movie received an 8 and IMDb. The eye-catching special effect and the futuristic technology featured in the movie have been a topic of heated discussion on social media. Some of them are closer to reality than you might think. Today, I will walk through each of these novel technologies, starting from the most realistic to those only a few steps away from us, and finally to those that are pure science fiction for the foreseeable future. Spoiler alert, just in case you haven't seen it yet. So let's begin with the first one, the exoskeleton. The exoskeleton worn by the soldiers in the movie were not props or costumes, they're actually commercial products donated by ULS Robotics. It is a Shanghai-based startup founded in 2018. The upper body exoskeleton robot featured here is type MAPSE. According to the company's website, it provides up to 10 kg of assistance to its user when they are carrying heavy loads. It reduces shoulder fatigue and prevents work-related injuries. It's fully electric-driven and its battery lasts about 5 hours. The company also makes waist and lower body models too. The latter can help a user walk while carrying a load up to 50 kg. In fact, the lower exoskeleton model is already used in elderly mobility assistance. I have no doubt that in 35 years from now, the market and the technology will be more mature and there will be more advanced exo technology to help with the move and hindrance of the human body. It looks like the direction of robotic research and development is gradually shifting from human-machine collaboration to human-machine integration. An exoskeleton technology is moving from military into commercial market. It seems like semi-robotics may become a norm in the future. By one account, the global market value for exoskeleton robots is projected to be approximately 4.2 billion US dollar by 2028, growing at a 23% compound annual growth rate from 2022 to 2028. It's a huge market with high growth potential. Well, if we have to rate these exoskeleton from the movie using our scale, it would get a 5 on readiness dimension, as it's already available on the market today, and 3 on novelty, its potential influence is contingent on a number of factors such as affordability, production capacity, user experience, and battery life. The movie has certainly provided an excellent market opportunity for ULS Robotics. At this moment, I would give it a 3 in this dimension and see what awaits in the future. Now let's talk about the space elevator. To get to the moon by elevator is nothing new in sci-fi, but did you know that some researchers are actually working to make this science fiction dream come true? A space elevator is a vastly more economical way than rockets to travel to low Earth orbit. Today, recreational space travel remains a joyride reserved for only the world's super rich. In the commercial space travel industry, it costs around 20,000 US dollars for every kilogram of payloads. That means a 70 kilogram adult would need to pay 1.4 million US dollars. By contrast, the cost of carrying every kilogram by elevator is 200 bucks, so I guess somewhat more affordable. Of course, the biggest value of space elevator isn't consumer space tourism, but rather the ability to put satellite payloads into lower Earth orbit at a lower cost compared to rocket based delivery. That said, building an elevator to the moon is too big of a step to take. Currently, scientists want to start with elevator to the space station. The space station is much closer to us, at just 400 kilometers above the Earth, but also the space station is in a geosynchronous orbit. This geosynchronous orbit is an orbit that surrounds the equator of the Earth. Payloads in this orbit stay relatively to the Earth. They rotate with the Earth, that means that if you drop a cable from the station, it won't get tangled up or get dragged or pushed as a result of relative movement between it and the Earth. And more importantly, the force of gravity and centrifuge reach a fine balance on this orbit. Those two forces compete with one another. Below geosynchronous orbit, gravity wins, and beyond it, centrifugal effect wins. 
These forces gave the cable maximum tension and that requires the cable to be made with material whose specific strength is roughly 50 times of steel. Unsinkable as it might sound, scientists have in fact found such material. Carbon nanotubes. This is a tube made of carbon with diameters typically measured in nanometers. On the wall of such nanotube, carbon atoms are arranged into hexagons, which gave the material very high strength. In ideal conditions, the strength of carbon nanotube can reach 800 gigapascals. This approximately is the strength of diamonds. And one of the biggest challenges today is making nanotubes long enough to be constructed into cables stretching at least 400 kilometers. To this date, scientists only succeeded in making it into a few meters long. So we're still many years away from taking our first ride in a space elevator. By the way, there's an interesting tidbit outside the movie. The China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation expressed the support for the Wandering Earth 2 on Weibo and said by 2045, the construction of sky ladders, earth station and space station is expected to become a reality. Maybe we can expect something in our lifetime. If we have to rate these undergoing space elevator projects, which I invariably at a very early age, I mean a 1 for readiness, 4 for novelty, and 4 for potential influence. In addition to the space elevator, the real high-tech star in the movie is the 550 series of quantum computers. The movie highlights the capabilities of quantum computers. For example, it helped humans to complete the construction of multiple planetary engines in a short period of time. It also played an important role in the film's climax connecting the global planetary engines. The later model of quantum computers even enabled uploading of minds to have a digital afterlife. Quantum computers have been built in the labs during the last few years by scientists around the world, like Google's Syncomore and USTC's Jiuzhang. In 2019, IBM launched their first circuit-based commercial quantum computer, Q-System 1. It has to be housed in an airtight glass cube with a controlled environment, so you can't carry it around like they did in the movie, nor would it withstand the harsh environment of the moon. In reality, the closest thing to a laptop quantum computer is Gemini, built by a syndrome based startup called SpinQ. From the outside, SpinQ doesn't look very different from a common desktop in size and design. It weighs 55 kilograms and has a volume of less than 0.3 cubic meters and costs less than 50,000 US dollars. The IBM Q System 1 contains a 20 qubit quantum processor, while the Gemini only has a 2 qubit, but it might just be enough for its stated goals. In a research paper published by the startup in 2021, SpinQ's Gemini aims to provide hands-on experience for teaching quantum computing at all levels from K-12 to the college level. Technically, whether it's a large quantum computing prototype or a teaching machine like the SpinQ Gemini, no quantum computer has yet achieved expectations of scientists' ideas. And both China and the United States have only reached the first stage of their goals. The aim of scientists is to build a quantum computer of practical value within 5 to 10 years, truly creating a general purpose quantum computer like the omnipotent MOS in the movie may have to wait even longer. But this is currently one of the world's most heavily invested fields of science and technology, so progress is constantly happening. At present, we gave SpinQ Gemini a 5 in readiness, 3 on novelty, and as to potential influence, it remains to be seen, so a 3. All of the technologies we've discussed so far are more or less work in progress, but with this last one, scientists don't even agree on where to start. At the moment, uploading your mind into the digital world is still purely science fiction. The main reason is that there is no clear consensus among neuroscientists as to what consciousness is and where it is in the brain. There are cognitive scientists who believe the so-called consciousness is actually a user interface in our brain, just like what we see on the screen of a computer. We don't know what is going on behind the screen when we press the buttons, but we don't need to know either, as long as the machine functions well. So a question inevitably arise, can we upload our consciousness without knowing exactly what it is? Although the movie itself don't reveal much on how the characters did it, one of the science advisors of the movie shared their idea behind this concept during an interview. To upload consciousness, one has to first record it with as much as detail as possible. It basically entails recording the brain activity with electroencephalogram EEG while making a series of snapshots of all the neuron connections in the brain. 
This would require the user to wear some EEG headset continuously and frequently during a prolonged period of time and lie in a brain scanning machine from time to time. It indeed is a well-imagined approach, but it is somewhat impractical for today's standards. The brain's cognitive function relies largely on the connection of neurons. For this reason, neuron scientists have developed an approach called connectomide to detail this map of neuron connections. But recording a person's connectomide alone might not be enough. Just as roadmap don't tell you what car is on the road, connectomide don't provide any information about the pattern of electric communications among neural connections. In other words, it doesn't record how a brain uses these connections to convey messages. Current EEG technology has its limitations. It can't zoom in and tell you what's happening in any individual neural connection. Before recording memory or consciousness, understanding what's happening on a given neural connection is crucial. So far, scientists have no way to observe the behavior of individual connection on a living human brain. They have only observed it on neuron growing on petri dish. Beyond this, there are also some evidence showing that the substance within the neurons are at least equally important for forming memory. In 2018, scientists transplanted mRNAs in the neurons of one senile to another and found that the recipient senile acquired the memory of the donor. Given there are too many unknowns in neuroscience, especially the inner working of our minds and consciousness, digital afterlife remains a thing for the distant future, and it's uncertain as to whether we will ever achieve something alike. Since we have currently no viable path to a digital afterlife, there is no point in rating it. But as a sci-fi idea, it's becoming more and more common. Not long ago, Elon Musk said on his Twitter account that he has already uploaded his brain onto the cloud, without revealing much detail and caused much speculation and ridicule. In the foreseeable future, perhaps with advance in neuroscience and digital technologies, news about attempts to upload minds will make headlines from time to time and continue to capture our imagination. However, as it is indicated in the movie, the uploading of consciousness to supercomputers such as 550W doesn't necessarily bode well for humans. Uploading consciousness may give the computer a human face, as it now goes by the personified name Moss, 550W spun upside down. In the movie, the sentient Moss claimed responsibility for both the past two world-ending crises as well as several yet-to-come future crises. This invited lively discussion on the internet, just as recently the rival of ChatGPT has stormed the world. The conversational AI seems to be capable of doing many things. It no longer appears cold and rigid as most chatbots, and it even gave you the illusion of having a human touch. Our reactions and feelings are mixed, excitement of this new tool on the one hand and anxiety about unemployment on the other. Although the intelligence level of current AI is nowhere near that of Moss, the disruption they bring about is real and comprehensive. We can rest assured that for now, AI is not going to have consciousness anytime soon, whether by uploading it or by any other ways, since artificial general intelligence is still in its early stages. The relevant question is, how can we have a positive symbolic relationship with the ever more powerful AI so that we can ride the tide of technological improvement to the new heights of human progress? What we talked about today are just a few of the novel technology featured in Wondering Earth 2. What scenes of scientific progress captured your imagination in this film? If you'd like to change to our show, are there any other scientific films that you would like us to dive into? As usual, we look forward to your thoughts and feedback.